Uh, well, um, I did my undergrad uh, in DJ Sangvi, uh, computer engineering. Uh, worked with TCS for one year after that uh, as a software engineer. Uh, then uh, ended up going uh, to Stanford for Masters in Management Science and Engineering. Uh, you know, to be honest, uh, I applied for a bunch of different programs because you know I was really in that phase where uh, I wanted to discover what I wanted to do, and uh, I wasn't sure. So I'll probably give some tidbits today also about. Oh, uh, you know, people can better prepare. You know, if their application is more focused. But again, coming back to myself, uh, I interned with Facebook uh, for about six months uh, uh, in 2008 during my master's program. And then after that, I was very fascinated with education technology. Uh, 2007, 2008 was really the period, you know, when uh, technology was trying to solve very prevalent problems in education, and I wanted to pick up one. Uh, uh, part of it and uh, really go hard at it. Uh, so I actually ended up doing a startup of my own at Stanford. Uh, it was something around what you guys are doing today. It's taking data and then trying to see if I can automate university recommendations. Uh, we did that for about one year or so, but then a couple of my friends wanted to go back to India and scale this. It scaled into a very different company called Jombay today, very different than what we started off doing. But uh, I wanted to stay back in the US and really work in edtech over here, so I didn't end up joining them. Uh, I joined Chegg, uh, which was another education technology company. Uh, they were into textbook rentals, but still being uh, into education and using tech to solve a problem, which is to help students get cheaper textbooks, was something that was very fascinating to me. Uh, learned a lot. I was their first data scientist. Uh, worked there for about two and a half years. And then the opportunity came along in my current job. Uh, less than five people in the company, and uh, it was really an opportunity to build up. Uh, my core passion, which is data science, function from the ground up in a company and see it scale. So I worked as an individual contributor data scientist for about three and a half years. But then for the last five years now, I've been managing a team, uh, managing a team of very talented data scientists and uh, helping uh, different uh, you know functions within the company make data driven decisions. So that's been my small journey so far. Uh, a little bit, yes, and uh, but actually the passion to go abroad started, I think, in my third year. Um, third year, I think, around somewhere around the end of the fifth semester. Uh, so one of the things which uh, which was very clear to me was uh, I wanted uh, to go and study outside of India. I mean, no offense to the Indian education system. I think I've learned a lot in my undergrad, and even I think there are some great uh, graduate schools, but. Uh, at that point of time, you know, particularly when I was in uh, my, you know, transition, transitioning between my fifth and the sixth semester, I wanted to study something technical. Uh, I was not considering gate. I wanted to study, uh, you know, do a master's in computer science at that stage and felt that the best programs out there will be in the US for that. So I started preparing uh, for my applications and, you know, uh, you know, going about the process, thinking that I'm uh, going to go out of India and particularly uh, to the US. So started with my GRE in the sixth semester, and uh, besides that, one another thing which I realized during my research was that uh, I needed to have something extra in my profile besides just you know the regular you know few projects or uh, uh, you know uh, just the grades that you know that a regular undergrad would have. So that's when I think I made a conscious decision also to maybe get some work experience because that will give me a chance to work on projects. And I think as I worked at ECS, I went in with a goal of working for one year itself. Uh, to an extent, uh, I think even that job, while it was not the most intellectually satisfying, I did learn a lot about computer science too. Uh, so everything after the sixth semester, I think, uh, helped uh, crystallize the decision better in terms of what I wanted to do. Uh, and everything played its part. So it wasn't one event around, I would say, you know, whether I was working at ECS or Anything about you know what I was doing at undergrad decision kept evolving as and when you know I went through my journey. Okay, so I ended up uh, taking the GRE three times, uh, and I'll uh, give some details here. The first time I gave it was in my sixth semester with preparation of about four months, and uh, I think uh, my biggest mistake at that point of time was not realizing what sort of a transformation is needed in the way you approach studying when you are preparing for the GRE. Uh, I underestimated, uh, you know, to what extent your vocab has to be good. I think my word list preparation was okay, but what I was struggling was with the application. So I maybe prepared with, you know, just a couple of softwares. Like I think I did Kaplan and maybe Power Prep, but uh, 
I ended up with a score of around 1300, 1320 in my first uh, attempt. And just to give people context, GRE was out of 1600 back then. There were two sections, 800 quant and 800 verbal. And uh, to be really eligible for uh, you know the top 10 universities, as they say, you had to be somewhere at least around a 1400. So uh, once I got a 1320, one thing was very clear to me that I was not going to be able to crack a top 20. A great GRE score is not going to guarantee a good university, but a bad GRE score will make sure that you definitely don't get through. So uh, it was very clear to me then. I applied to a few universities even after my uh, undergrad, but overall I was pretty clear that you know I was going to give GRE again and you know apply maybe after a year or two of working. So as soon as I got done with my degree, I started preparing for GRE again because there was a four month time lag between uh, when my uh, degree finished and my job was going to start. Uh, and one of the uh, one of the people in my class, he actually ended up getting something like a 1550. So I think I got a lot of tips from him. And the simplest tip that I got from him was you need to prepare with uh, at least four or five different softwares. Uh, and uh, as much as possible, uh, start reading, uh, you know, any content that is, you know, generated in say, either US dailies or US news articles, uh, because what that gets going is uh, it, it improves your reading speed, which is very important for reading comprehension, which is where most uh, students tend to lose out their points. And the second thing is it, it starts to get your mind activated away from, you know, like just the engineering kind of studying, you know, where you're very used to just cursory reading, remembering a few things and then, you know, trying to remember the summary. GRE is all about detail, you know, focusing on the details, the nuances of the meanings of the words, understanding, you know, how words have been used in what context. And uh, you can't do cursory reading. You really have to focus on the depth uh, in both math and uh, verbal. And I think that was really the big difference uh, when um, I gave GRE the second time. There was no pressure of academics. Uh, I think my preparation was a lot stronger because I gave many tests. So my mind was very used uh, to, you know, going into that environment and being able to crack it. And in my second attempt, I ended up getting something like a 1450 or a 1470. And once I got that, I was pretty sure that, uh, you know, at least I have the minimum GRE score to be able to crack the universities I want. And then it was building uh, the rest of my application. Okay, so I actually approached my application in two phases. Uh, so even after I uh, graduated with a score of 1320, however, I had excellent academics, I wasn't very confident of being able to crack the top 10. So, you know, to get a feel of it, I applied to five universities in my uh, in my first year. First year meaning first year of application right after my degree. That's when I just finished uh, bachelor's in 2005. So the universities that I applied to then, uh, one of them was, uh, I think, Cornell. Uh, the second one was uh, USC. Uh, then I applied to University of California, Irvine. And then, um, what else did I apply? Buffalo and uh, UT Austin. So in my first year, when I applied, I cracked uh, Cornell. I did not get through UT Austin uh, and I got all the other safe ones that I applied. But uh, even at Cornell, the program was one year. Uh, that scared me to an extent. So even first and foremost, the thing was I was uh, going uh, Straight after my bachelor's, the program did not give me an internship opportunity. And uh, that to an extent told me that, you know, I could be hurrying up my education here and I could be in a situation wherein after one year, I'm not the best prepared to get the best job. And that's not a situation I wanted to be in. So I think I, it, I made it clear to myself that no matter what, I don't want to go into a one year program, no matter how good a university Cornell is. And hence, uh, I went about preparing for GRE again. Uh, and then being able to apply to uh, a few more top 10 schools. Because having got into Cornell, I got the confidence that I think if I'm applying to other top 10 schools, I will be able to crack it. And then the other thing, as I started working in the IT industry, which became clear to me is uh, this is not the most intellectually satisfying for me in terms of you know being able to take requirements from a product manager or from a business person and just end up coding it. Uh, I wanted to be into something which allowed me to create a bigger impact for the organization. So I needed to get more business skills, but yet at the same time maintain the leverage uh, of analytic skills that I acquired during engineering. And hence I applied to operations research, uh, 
some analytics and uh, management science and engineering programs. Okay, so the first thing about Stanford is Stanford will want you to have more or less stopped or you know been in like the top three to five percent throughout. Uh, and it it starts right from the first semester, maybe to an extent, you know, even if in your tenth and your twelfth, if you know you have had a very good percentage, while it's it's not a deal breaker if you if you didn't do great, but if you have been you know one of the toppers either in your school or you know in your district or in your city, that certainly helps. You know, because then you can show a pedigree of winning all the time. So Stanford wants to see, are you a winner or not in everything that you have done? Have you given it your best? And the second thing that Stanford wants is they want super clarity in your SOP and from your recommendation letter that this guy really knows what, you know, he or she is looking out for. So the first thing was that my arcades were great. I was, you know, usually in the top three, uh, you know, either in the college or in the university at most times. So that certainly helped. Uh, the second thing which I knew was even that was not going to be enough uh, because, you know, there are a lot of toppers from like, I mean, think about it. There are like close to 400, 500 universities in India, maybe more. Every topper feels like, you know, uh, they can, um, you know, apply to Stanford. So how will Stanford determine what's different between one topper versus another? It's not that their caliber is very different. Most people, you know, if they were to get admitted as a topper from any university, they will likely succeed over there. It's not rocket science. So the other thing I realized is I needed to show Stanford that I'm truly passionate about, you know, computer science and, you know, leveraging my skills to do something extra. So one of the things I did was I ended up doing a project at IIT Bombay. In our time in 2004, 2005, IIT Bombay would allow external groups to apply, work on very challenging problems. So we applied, we went through a rigorous interview process and we got through. And we gave it our best for that project. Uh, we got selected in the top five across India uh, and we won a Red Hat Award of about 50,000 rupees. Uh, that was a big deal because what happened was I got a recommendation letter from the head of Crescent, which was the IIT uh, Bombay IT department. So that turned out to be another big differentiator. The third thing uh, which I think really helped me was uh, my extracurriculars were strong and my extracurriculars were also very relevant. So while, you know, I think, you know, some people consider that, you know, you should just be taking part in tech fest and all. Just being an organizer or, you know, just an event head of any event that doesn't really help. So I organized a lot of technical events at DJ Sung. We took part in technical paper presentations and I did well in those. So that certainly helped build my technical profile and it showed Stanford that, you know, I was going outside of the classroom and trying to apply the skills and the knowledge that I had. And even in my work experience, one of the things that I, which I determined uh, myself that I wanted was a recommendation letter from my boss and a good one, not just stating uh, fluffy things. So right from my training up until, you know, the first three to four months that I spent before applying, I took it upon myself that, you know, I'll take on one or two very challenging projects and do a great job at it. It was just four months of interaction, but that helped. Uh, and, you know, I got a very good recommendation letter. And in my statement of purpose, one of the things which I wrote was, what are the courses I wanted to take, why I wanted to take them and what I wanted to do after the program in a very clear, concise manner. I told them I'm interested in a tech, which I knew right before I went. I told them, you know, I'm either thinking of doing a startup and here are the skills that I'm looking to acquire from the program. And, uh, or if I'm not doing that, then I'll end up joining an tech company. I think that level of clarity is needed to come through in your SOP and to an extent it needs to be backed up in your, in your recommendation letters. Uh, it comes with experience. It comes, you know, when you go through a process of uh, self-realization. That I think is truly what takes to crack Stanford. Okay, uh, so this depends on the program pretty much. Uh, if you are in computer science, uh, it doesn't make that much of a difference unless, unless if you are in the top three. And the top three, I'll say, are MIT, Stanford, and Carnegie Mellon. Then probably a second tier after that could be Berkeley. Berkeley, I would still maybe, maybe it might be a close to a tier one, but these three certainly still rank uh, slightly above uh, Berkeley. Then you know, whether it's your Cornell or, you know, it's, uh, you know, your UC Irvine's, uh, what else, UT Austin's, uh, it, it doesn't really matter as much, I would say, you know, if you have, you know, done exceptionally well in your master's program. Uh, because one of the things that, you know, you'll realize about computer science is, uh, while there are certain universities, you know, that specialize in, you know, certain specific courses, unless and of course, if you're going for a PhD, that doesn't really matter because you're not really going to get the opportunity to do to deal to do deep research. So if you're going for a master's, I would say uh, unless and until if you're in the top three, uh, no, it doesn't really matter. 
do well in your program take courses wisely and whatever courses you take give your best shot at it the biggest thing that actually matters when it comes to finding jobs is your location not so much the ranking of the university the best computer science jobs are on the west coast which is in the san francisco bay area or on the east coast in the new york area and actually still you know even when i compare these two regions uh, the best tech companies your google facebook linkedin uh, and even the startups uh, they are on the west coast east coast has some startup activity going on but it's mostly you know jobs in the it sectors of banks and you know other financial companies which also give you good steady it careers but you know if you really want to use your skills to solve creative engineering problems uh, those skills are going to be on the on the west coast now coming back to programs in say business analytics data science uh, there it will matter a little bit because uh, what happens is these jobs are far fewer compared to you know engineering jobs so the way you have to differentiate yourself is first and foremost you know you need a good brand uh, uh, from a university uh the second thing you'll notice uh, is a big difference in the caliber of students and cross functional learning from your peers uh and horizontal learning as they call it also goes a long way now uh you know the programs at your stanfords and your berkeleys to an extent you know even at your cornells there's a program i think in business analytics at ut austin you'll notice that the caliber of the students here is far better as compared to you know universities which are say not in the top 10 or you know slightly even outside the top 20 so your learning from your peers is not going to be as valuable and uh, you know you're not going to have some of the best companies go and recruit over there so it really to answer your question and summarize it it depends on the program uh, for engineering programs i would say it probably doesn't matter as much for non engineering programs it certainly does okay first few days i started off with the program uh, i mean needless to say they were scary uh, i mean uh, first and foremost you know while you land you know you are You, I mean, you have none of your close family and friends around you. Uh, I mean, for me, when I came, I was probably one of the only people from Mumbai University to make it that year. So you know, nobody from any familiar territory as well. Uh, that, to an extent, uh, you know, it it kind of gets your guard up. You know, everybody, you know, when you're coming to a good school, is you know talking about the good things that they've done. And to an extent, you know, sometimes you know you even start to doubt yourself for a moment. Do I really belong here? But Uh, you know, as and when time went on, I started to get more confidence in my own abilities, which I've always had. Uh, the first few days, really, you know, it's about getting acquainted to the environment. You know, getting acquainted to the culture, getting your basis right. You know, your your food, your you know your your stay. Uh, it's 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 important to get a routine going. Okay, uh, that's what I really focused on in the first one week to two weeks. You know, figuring out you know what am I going to eat three times a day? Where am I going to find that food? what am i going to be my basic living expenses where am i going to live how am i going to live who am i living with the quicker those questions get answered i think the more stability you start to feel in your life because you know uh, to really put it it's like roti kapda makan right wherever you are whenever you are you know uprooting yourself those are the three basic things you need to establish first uh, once that was very clear so i was staying on campus uh, in stanford what happens is uh, staying off campus is actually far more expensive than staying on campus which is different compared to some other uh, other schools uh, i was staying with uh, somebody you know whom i became very good friends with uh, and uh, to an extent i figured out my food partly you know uh, you know eating on campus uh, there was another patel family that used to deliver indian food uh, roti sabzi dal rice and uh, to an extent started cooking a little bit as well so in the first two weeks once that became clear that's when i then started to focus on everything else you know okay how am i going to get some more basic cash uh, to manage some of my expenses uh, and so i started hunting for on campus jobs and one of the things i found out is uh, after my first month of studying i was able to land an on campus job but that job was taking up something like 15 hours a week and just the level of study and uh, you know toughness that i was exposed into academics that sanford brought into my life i'm like no i cannot spend 15 hours and yet hope to be able to do well uh i uh, i'm here to study i'm here to gain knowledge i'm not here to earn these like few thousand just to be able to sustain myself so i decided that okay if needed be you know i'll source more cash from india uh and you know i'll maybe cut down on some of the time that i'm spending on my on campus job i reduce that to about 6 to 7 hours a week just to meet my base, basic expenses uh, but thankfully you know my uh, dad you know the nice person that he is Uh, he ended up sponsoring at least my first semester and uh, part of the second one 
so that's how i got through my first uh, 6 to 8 months okay so the first time when you land and you see the magnificence of the campus uh, you will be blown away and uh, you know it's it's hard to describe it in words probably you know once you land over here uh, and see it for yourself you know you'll be able to get that feeling and the butterflies that i had when i landed here in 2006 uh, it's probably one of the largest campuses in the world and probably one of the most beautiful also uh, so it it it's it it captures you in its awe and you know you you thank your stars that you know you you must have done something great in your past life uh, to really you know be blessed to get here besides you know everything about you know all the things that i mentioned about academics and uh, you know work experience and etc uh, after that uh, one of the other things you know as i said you know you'll notice is the just the caliber of your peers uh, you are having people who have not just done well but been exceptional you know these are like toppers of iits toppers from you know some of the other best schools in the in, in the world you know uh, one of the persons uh, in my program was uh, a person who started a company right out of uh, london school of economics where he did his undergrad scaled the company to something like 5 million dollars in revenue i'm like you know i was happy you know earning 50000 as a price of price of a, a price in a project and here is this guy you know who has scaled a company to 5 million dollars in revenue and yet is part of this program it's that's the caliber of the people you know uh, you will meet and you know you'll get the opportunity to interact with and to an extent you know when you when you know you are in front of these people for the first time just the amount of confidence the ability to get things done and the kind of problems that they have solved they will overwhelm you for the beginning but you know it's important to feel confident in your own abilities it doesn't mean that you know you cannot do that someday and to an extent i think after a month of studying with them you know i realized that you know in terms of iq intelligence caliber uh, you know, i'm not very far behind so you know if i'm acquiring the right set of skills and if i'm clear in terms of what i want in my life it's not that i also can't achieve the things that these guys have achieved